All right, I think we're live. <laughs> okay, I think we're here. Um, if you can't hear us properly or there's anything funky, just let us know and we will adjust. Um, I'm going to make sure that everything's turned up and looking good. Okay. Can everybody hear okay? Give us a thumbs up if you can hear us so that we know. Yeah. Oh, thanks, excellent. Tim. All righty. So, yeah, we've got a live chat for everybody. Um, we've got a few questions that have already been sent in from patrons, so we were going to answer those first. And then if anybody has extra questions, just send them through and, um, yeah, we'll answer them all. Hi, Tim, Roy, Jim, thanks for joining us. Um, so the first question we had was about when we're going back to Mexico, um, and that is a good question. And we're going back really soon. So in a week, um, we're going to be beginning the journey back um because there's so many connections and things it always takes a bit of time and especially right now with um the way flight times are where flights are like getting cancelled and rescheduled and all of that we're kind of trying to um I guess be really careful with not having flights super close together but yeah we'll be back in we'll be back on chuffed within like 10 days basically right from yeah. now yeah, so yeah, yeah. we're really really excited oh hi from Norway hi Charles Good to see you all here. Um, yeah, so we're going to be back to Chuff really soon. Um, as soon as we get back, we'll be doing the fuel system and then putting Chuff in the water. So we are not far off actually being back in the water and starting to sail again, which is good. Big Island, Texas, the UK. Hi, everybody. Yeah. It's really cool. Yeah, we're, we're hoping that the we're giving ourselves a, a kind of a big time frame to be able to put the the fuel system in and get the boat in the water um, because we have found that everything always takes longer than we anticipate. However, if it all goes well, everything goes kind of fast and we'll actually have the boat in the water like within, in within, a, within a week and a half yeah. of us getting back there once we get everything situated. But yeah, we will see. And so the next question we had was how far north do we plan to go and the rough schedule for heading north, like where we're stopping or if we're just doing straight shoots and things like that. So um, in terms of how far north we'll go, we haven't really determined that exactly, but we will likely stay in Mexico and not go into North America at this point. Um, yeah. There's a few reasons for that, including that Chuff doesn't have the type of insurance we would need to go into America right now. There's also a few things that we don't have AIS, we don't have radar. There's a few things that some states require that we don't have so that's the plan for now is just staying in mexico um and in terms of the rough schedule for heading north which because we are aiming to get into the sea of cortez we know our first stop is going to be will Turco. we'll likely stop in vallarta um other than that we're kind of letting it be a little bit um fluid because as you guys know storms weather there's so many things that change boat plans we are organising to do um, some animal work in both Vallarta and Wotulco, so those stops are really definitive. Um, and then we, depending on what we're doing, may look at stopping in like Puerto and Hell and Zihuatanejo and things. So, But we do have plans to do animal work as we stop. And then obviously also just to see all of the um, beautiful scenery and things that are in those areas because some of those spots are really, really beautiful. Um Puerto Vallarta in particular sounds like a really amazing place to have a boat for a little while. There's whales. Um, there's a lot of bays around within a pretty short distance to move between. So we, are, we aren't we are shooting up the coast too quickly, but we do want to be in the Sea of Cortez this season. So we're also not going to be sitting around too much. So there's yeah. going to be hopefully lots of sailing and lots of new places, which is cool. Um, yeah, so we're very excited about that. Um just have a little read through the comments, British Columbia, Canada, Eastern Washington, Ontario. That's really cool. And thank you. We appreciate that about the hard work. It has been hard work trying to get everything going. Um, yeah, we're, uh, we've are we kind of acclimated to not the intense heat here in Australia. Um, it's been an extremely cold winter, mm. um, which unless you're <laughs> from here, it's really not cold, but it is it's nice and so yeah. it's just started to kind of get hot here and so once we get back to southern mexico it's going to be kind of a shock to the system <laughs> yeah we'll probably need a few days just to acclimatize to the 35 yeah. degree celsius heat that we experience in puerto madero most days um, and as roy said huh lucky you're not back in oz we are actually back in oz so um 
the flights are all over the place. So that's one of the reasons why, although we're leaving in a week, we have like a stopover in Brisbane that's more than 24 hours to make sure that we don't miss the international flight because, yes, yeah. flights are if getting cancelled constantly. If you watch the news here, constantly. the main story is mm. flight cancellations. Yes, <laughs> lots of fun. And, um, yeah, yeah, the airlines are making it difficult. But, yeah, we, we're going, we've got it all sorted, hopefully, so we don't miss anything. So, um yeah, so we also had a question about our future plans. So kind of the next two years, what we're doing. So obviously this year, like I said, the plan is to get into the Sea of Cortez um, and we're going to be there for a season. So that will take us into next year. Um, in terms of our longer term plans, we, we've we learned our lesson from planning too far in advance because as you guys know, every time we make a big plan, things don't always go the way we planned them. So um, we haven't made really big plans in terms of like exact destinations and exact dates that we want to go places. But in terms of, I guess, our goals, what we'd really love to do is eventually have financial backing to do bigger projects. Um, what we do right now obviously makes a really big difference, but the more people we can have involved, um, the more we can put into it, the more we can help people and get out of it. So we, I guess, in terms of long-term plans, we plan to continue moving chuffed. We plan to continue stopping and doing the animal work along the way. And we'd also like to be able to, um, during the off season, like right now, for example, with hurricane season, um, it's not the best time of year to be on the boat. We'd like to be able to then do projects perhaps inland and in other places. Like for example, I was a bear vet in um, China for two years and there's not that many bear veterinarians in the world. And there's a lot of bear projects um, so it'd be great to be able to like offer skills that perhaps not every veterinarian has to projects like that um, during the kind of off time from sailing. Yeah, go to um, Canada or somewhere yeah. in South America mm. and, and do something like that just to cha change it up. So it's yes. not only boat stuff all the time. Yeah. Kind of have, you know, a lot of boat stuff and then do a, a bigger project that's different just to yeah. diversify and yeah. Do different yeah. things because although a lot of people do sail year round it can be really hard to plan that because um like i said with hurricane seasons and the change of weathers and things it's it's a lot of moving and also for us um we love chuffed but she is an older boat and does have some problems that make it a little harder she needs repairs periodically basically so we can't just move it constantly um oh that's sweet hi angel doc thank you deirdre um oh another question we had was do we want a pet Yes or no and why? Um, so this pet, this is a really interesting question. Yes, we want a pet, uh, but we are not going to get one right now. <laughs> um, yeah, we obviously both of us love animals. Um, I think that's fairly obvious. And we both really love to have a dog. Um, but for right now with how the boat is, I think it would be really difficult to have a dog on board. There's plenty of people who do it and manage it really well, but I acknowledge that it takes a lot of work to have a dog on a boat and it takes a lot of planning in terms of making stops that accommodate them and then obviously the dog's paperwork and all of those things. And particularly because I'm Australian and all my family's in Australia, which means we do come back to Australia periodically, it's really difficult to bring animals in and out of – well, out of Australia is not so difficult. Bringing them into Australia is really difficult and we don't want to have to make our pet quarantine. And so until we would have a system where the pet could get – cared for if we were to come back to Australia for a month um we're we're waiting yeah. um I'm, get a pet dolphin yeah that would be convenient if it could be some sort of free living animal that just comes and visits us um periodically also, I'm <laughs> jotting down notes here so if anybody yes. has any questions just put them in the chat and I, I'll write it down on a list that I have going right here so. yeah yeah um another question we had was whether we're going to the Annapolis um boat show You've been once, right, Jim? I have been one time, mm. yeah. A, a while back before before he was a YouTuber. <laughs> um, so he, he, but he did go and um, see some cool boats. Um, yeah, we we would have liked to have gone to meet it, meet people and things, um, but right now our focus is on getting chuffed ready. We've had so many delays getting started. You know, we thought we would be sailing two years ago and then with the engine and then we thought we would be sailing in like January and then I broke my ankle and then, yeah, we, we, things just keep coming up. And so for now we're just focused on getting the boat ready and so we can start getting these animal projects done that we yeah. kind of organised. And, and the boat show is in October. Yeah. Um, and that's like going to be exactly when we're scheduled to be getting back yeah. the boat, doing the work, putting it in the water, getting it ready to sail. Mm -hmm. And so 
going to Maryland, coming back, it yeah. would just be one too many delays mm -hmm. at this point. So yeah, and financially too, with the price of flights, we yeah. would rather put our money towards the boat into the animal projects right now. So um, yeah, so I hope everyone enjoys it who goes, but unfortunately we won't be there. Hopefully one day we'll be able to do a meet and greet somewhere in the world that's um, that there are populated people, which will be good. Um, we also had a bit of a question about the fuel system. Um, basically, uh, we just had a couple of questions about like how we're going to reinstall it and things like that. I'm not going to go into a great deal of detail, but we did talk to um, a Yanmar mechanic, uh, multiple Yanmar mechanics. So we have tried to get the very best system for our boat. I also posted on a lot of the OVNI and aluminium boat groups because um, with the aluminium tanks and slightly different setups to other boats, it was good to get the input from people who have a boat that's kind of built like ours. Um, basically, we are installing new fuel lines, new filters, um, new hose clamps and things like that. We have got a vacuum gauge that's going to be on the Raycor to help us diag do diagnostics in the future. For right now, I saw Tim said about the um, lift pump. For right now, we're not putting a lift pump in but we may. The main reason we're not putting it in is the Yanmar engines technically don't need it. And as you said, it would definitely help with the air leaks, um, but we would like to attempt to get the system working with as little outside things as possible because obviously every time you add something, it's something else that then could become a problem in the future or cause problems when you're troubleshooting. And in theory, our system should work without one um, based on talking to all the OVNI owners and the Yanmar mechanics. So we're going to attempt it without it. If we're still getting problems, then that's going to be the next step is putting in a lift pump um, to, to use to prime the system and to be under to be used underway while the engine's running. A lot of people do put them in and bypass them to prime the system, but we felt like that was a lot of extra things to add just to save yourself kind of the five minutes of manual priming. So we're, we're just going to manually prime yeah, it for now. Our, our general theory mm. is to keep it as simple as possible and not have mm -hmm. as, like as few points of failures as we can put in. So yeah, yeah. Start starting basic and then we'll see how it, how it goes mm -hmm. and what needs to be added. Yeah. Hopefully nothing. Yeah. yeah <laughs> we'll we'll see. see. Yeah. We'll see. Um, but we, although we don't know what the definitive problem was, based on talking to the mechanic, we think we will have solved it regardless of kind of the few options it could be because the air leak does seem really likely. What we're doing should fix that if that was happening. Um, yeah, so, but we do appreciate so many people commented and sent us emails and um, like our patrons gave us a lot of advice about how to solve that problem too. And we really, really appreciated it. We got a lot of really good ideas and in real time because our patrons are getting live updates we had a few who gave us some really good suggestions to check right there and then, which was really, really cool. Um, so we, yeah, we really appreciated, appreciated all of that. Um, oh, that's sweet. The <laughs> future veterinarian. Oh, good luck to her, Michael. And thank you, Stephen. Um, yeah, we're, we're hoping we are inspiring the future veterinarians out there. I've been trying to do a lot of um, talks at the veterinary schools as well. We, we do free talks about what we do and about some of the work I've done in the past, which we really enjoy because we're hoping it helps to inspire new veterinarians to do work like what we do, as well as the traditional clinic work. Um, Sorry for that one. All right, cool. So Stephen had um, kind of a question statement. Um, yeah, as Tim said, yeah, it would, it would definitely help having that lift pump. So that's definitely something we we have on the, on the agenda. Um, oh, cool, Buenos Aires, Hobart, we've got people from all over. Um, so one of the statements we had was about, it seems that, um, poor people's animals are the ones that we work with. And yes, that is, that is true. Um, generally we're working in areas that are under-resourced. For example, Puerto Madero only has one veterinarian. Um, before we got there, her skills with small animals was limited because at her veterinary school, they did a lot of like cattle work, um, like essentially livestock work and not so much with small animals. And so um, I think she was feeling a bit overwhelmed being the only veterinarian in town and she wasn't able, she can't charge people very much, which means that doing upgrades to her clinic is difficult. And it also means that she can't offer services at a low cost. So for example, spay and neuters, as a veterinary clinic, she can't afford to offer that at, at a low cost because um, she also doesn't have a huge income. And so 
you know, our goal was to provide them with the resources to be able to do the low low cost spay and neuter. So that was connecting her with a um, statewide vet who does them and also helping to provide funding so that people could afford it. Um, basically, our, our goal is to make veterinary care accessible to everybody, regardless of their socioeconomic status. And we really believe that all people deserve to own a pet because I think there are a huge number of social and mental health and physical health benefits of having a pet. I think it's something that's like really important to people. And then every pet deserves to have access to health care. And so if every person deserves a pet and every pet deserves access to health care, providing free health care to pets is something that needs to happen. And so um, that's something we're really, really passionate about. And as I said about giving talks to veterinary groups and veterinary students, that is something we talk about a lot is how even in countries like Australia and America and the UK, how affordable veterinary care could be offered to people in different ways. Um, and so, yeah, uh, we really do aim to provide people who wouldn't otherwise be able to afford veterinary care with veterinary care. Um, yeah. And between the boat and mm -hmm. and the van, like the last set of videos that are mm -hmm. coming out now, um, yeah, what we're able to go in and, and fill the gaps in veterinary service. And that's why, yes, it, it does seem like all the animals we work with are from lower socioeconomic classes because they are. And mm -hmm. so we were able to move around and yeah, fill in these gaps in service. And so the yeah. van has been a very good mode of transportation in mm -hmm. the meantime. And um, yeah, soon, soon we'll be back on the boat doing more or less the same thing. Yeah. And heading up the coast, we're mostly going to be working with rescue groups that are already in the places we're visiting that just need help getting, um, you know, either just where they just take veterinary volunteers or if they just need help, like establishing new programs or different things like yeah. that. So um, that'll be really, really good. And um, as some of you know, I also worked with wildlife in the past. Um, I was a wildlife vet in Australia and then a bear vet in China. And in Panama and Costa Rica, we did a lot of wildlife work. And that's something that we hope to do again in the future as well, um, because once again, wild wild animals don't have money in their pockets. And so um, sometimes they don't get the best care that they could um, just because there's no um, money there to fund their care. So uh, that's definitely something that we hope to do in the future again is working with wildlife um, as much as we can. Yeah. Um, so a skunk works, do you have a wish list of items that you need help with? Um, and if so, how would you like for us to help with that? Um, yeah, that's a good question. So... I wouldn't say we really have a wish list at this point. Like, yeah, I mean, there's definitely items that are on our wish list, some of which are like really expensive. Like, um, for example, like a having maker. a yeah, yeah, having a water maker on board would make life a lot easier, particularly in Mexico because there isn't um, potable water, and so getting water on board almost always means having to go into a marina because trying to um, you know, jerry can out enough water to fill a 500 yeah. litre tank is really difficult. And even then filling up from the marina, we're having to treat a lot of our water because we have aluminium tanks. That's anyway, yeah. it, it's not super easy. Yeah. And I mean, um, that's something that we're like, oh yeah, ideally we would have yes. one of these things, but it's not something we're like going out of our way mm -hmm. to try to acquire and install and, and all this other things. Like mm -hmm. at the moment, we're really just trying to move the boat and and mm. and work with animals and not so much refurbishing just yeah. at this point yeah um, we're hoping that that's um yeah on done for a little while with all the work we've done so far um in terms of a wish list though with the animal work one of the biggest things that we use and need is um like tick control products um there's a huge amount of sarcoptes mange in the animals we work with which is uh caused by mites and it causes hair loss and itchy skin and if you've ever been anywhere where there's stray dogs and you see them with all that hair loss it's almost definitely a type of mange and the tablets that we use to get rid of fleas and ticks also treats that disease and so that's something we use every, every day when we work with animals and then also there's tick diseases um like ehrlichia which is carried by ticks and passed to the dogs. And so, again, protecting them from ticks, protects them from that disease, which can kill them. So um, that's something we use a lot of. Worming we use a lot of and vaccinations is what we use a lot of. And then I guess, although it's not so much of a wish list, spaying and neutering animals is really important to us. Um, and that most of those things we buy in country um, just because it's um, more affordable and easier than trying to get it sent down. Um, and yeah, like the best way to mm. support 
and and make make us able to buy these uh, medicines and provide these services is is just to donate like getting stuff sent is sometimes mm -hmm. causes uh it's sometimes easier said than done to send equipment mm -hmm. and send medication and um it, we can get a lot of it in the country and so yeah. the best way to su support the work is is to donate um either by becoming a patron yeah. or, or through uh paypal um there's different ways but that's generally the easiest way to support us because often we don't know Mm -hmm. exactly what's going to happen, where we're going to be, how things are going to go. And the best way to be able to be flexible and mm -hmm. provide flexible care for things that we just don't know what's going to happen yet is to have the the funding and financial like flexibility to be able mm -hmm. to shift and, and do different yeah. things. Especially so. if we have cases like, um, like some of you remember Blanquito and Kiwi, where they were actual medic stray dogs that had medical conditions that needed treating. Um, those we really it's hard for us to predict what we would need um and it's hard for us to predict what they will need and so just having like like funding so that we can help them and take them to vet clinics and get what the treatment they need is really important i just wrote there our vettails.com slash donate that's um that part of our website has all the different options for donating um as jim said too the other difficult thing with doing wish lists is um we have had things sent before that we've then had to pay so much import on that the item we've paid more than the item was valued at to get access to it. That that happened to us a few times. And yeah, I, I thought you were already a Patreon. So I appreciate the question. Thank you. Um, exactly. Like having funding is the most, is the easiest so we can buy in country. We had one donation sent to Costa Rica and it was so lovely. We actually got a lot of things. But the, um, yeah, I ended up having to pay so much import tax that it ended up costing more to pay that. And, you know, and then nobody wins because the person who sent it obviously didn't want us to have to pay for it either. So, you know, it's yeah. definitely easier. Oh, Wisconsin, cool. Um, yeah, and we, we're also hoping um, it's my birthday next month. Uh, no, not next month, the month after. Um, and so we're looking at possibly doing a little birthday fundraiser to help provide more treatments to animals on the journey too because, by my birthday, we will be sailing is the plan. And um, we're hoping we'll be in Wotulko and, and Bayata doing animal work. So that's going to be cool. Um, oh, okay. So they asked about a Starlink internet connection. We don't have a Starlink internet connection. Again, these are the types of things like the water maker, Starlink, even like AIS and radar. These are all things we, we really would love to have. And maybe one day we will. But as of right now, our funding just isn't big enough to justify putting so much towards those things and taking it away from the animals. Um, ultimately for us, the, the animal work kind of comes first. And right now, Chuffed is really livable. She's comfortable, like we can do it as she is. Um, and so, yeah, for now, the plan is to keep yeah. doing it as it is. And then perhaps one day if if and when funding comes in for those yeah. specific things. And in, in Mexico, mm. the, the data plans that yeah. you can get are not that expensive. Mm -hmm. And so as long as you're able to get some, if we're close enough to shore in an area where we're able to get um, cell phone reception, yeah. we are able to get decent, uh, decent data, like right yeah. off the phone. Um, so in the case of <laughs> like, if, if for no, if we don't have another way to get on the internet, that's that for us yeah. is a pretty affordable and easy way to, to get internet access. Yeah. And especially for like checking weather, or just doing like an update post for people so they know we've yeah. made it to a location. That that really does work well. Um, obviously, for uploading videos and things, it's a little more difficult. We tend to go to shore, but um, yeah. we just try and time that and schedule it so that it works out. Um, works out that we can release videos on time and things like that. Yeah. Well, I think that's all of our questions that were pre-submitted. Um, oh, hi, William. <laughs> um, Oh, cool. That's okay. Cool. One of our patrons has got, um, is moving onto their boat in two weeks. That's exciting. That is exciting. Yeah, Good that's luck. really cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. We, um, we, we're excited for you and we feel for you, I guess. <laughs> but hopefully you have more, more luck than we do. One of our friends, Steve in the Marina, he bought an older boat and what spent six months on it. And yeah, he's had no problems. He's, you know, he's, yeah, he's had a few little it. things, but once he got going, he was good. Some, most people have a bit better luck than what, what we've had the last two years. 
So, yeah, as I said, we, we've answered all the questions we've been sent through. Does anybody else have any extras? Um, as Tim said, yeah, the system will work without it, the fuel system, but the lift pump could help. Yeah, for sure. Um, we do appreciate that advice. Ankle all healed up. Good question. Um, hello. Hello in Idaho. Um, funnily enough, isn't that where I broke my ankle? It is where you broke Yeah, it. Targi. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. Well, I guess that's technically Wyoming, but. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, it was Wyoming. It was Idaho right. Yeah. Like... <laughs> um so yeah uh the ankle has all healed up I still yeah I still get a little bit of um like stiffness like if I um Jim's been really trying to get get my strength back we've been doing like mum and dad live on a little bit of a hill and if you keep going it kind of keeps going up so we've been doing the stairs and going up the hill and stuff and if I do a lot the next day my ankle will be a little stiff but um I'm more or less doing everything I used to do Probably the big thing now is attempting running. I've not really been running or jogging. Um, and I think that will be a little bit of a transition. Um, but it definitely was a process because once my ankle started healing, I guess my ankles roll in a little bit. And so my knees were starting to hurt. And so now I'm wearing orthotics, which is really cool. I have orthotic sandals that I have to wear instead of thongs. Um, and yes, yeah, so I've gone really cool. Um but it has helped hugely. My ankles and my knees have been so much better. So highly recommend if you're somebody who gets any weird pains, get some orthotics. Um, we have been surfing. Uh, Yapoon, where we are, is meant to have no surf. Everyone tells us there's no surf here. When we bought, we came and managed to find surfboards within like two days of arriving because we knew they would, well, I was hoping they'd be surf. Um, and we've surfed like two days a week, do you reckon? Yeah. Like yeah. pretty consistently. It's been small, long boarding waves. Logging country. Yeah. But nobody surfs here. So No. Well, <laughs> a lot of people say they surf here, yeah. but when we go up the beach, there's like two other people. So you have all the waves to yourself. It's like, it's a pretty cool spot to surf because you drive onto the beach um, down like kind of a, a dune that's been um, kind of paved to make sure it doesn't wreck the dune. Yeah. You go down on the beach, drive 10 minutes up the like a beach highway and then go to this um, surf reserve um, and there's no houses. It's like very few people. It's, it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's very cool. Um, Jim then, was a little, you were keeping an eye out the first few days, weren't you, with all the venomous slash oh, yeah. bitey creatures. Jellyfish and sharks and everything. <laughs> <Fuck it off. laughs> Jim has seen three snakes yeah, since he's been Yeah, the other day we were walking and, and Shetty stepped on a snake. Mm, and it might have been a brown snake too. Yeah. We were hoping it could have been a tree snake. We only saw the tail. Um, um, and yeah, as we the question mm. plans for surfing along the way, uh, it, it's actually not going to be the season mm. for surfing in, in Pacific Mexico, which is one of the reasons why it'll be better for sailing. The ocean should be calmer. Mm -hmm. We're going to be passing tons of great waves in Oaxaca. So if, you know, if there is some unseasonable mm -hmm. swell, you know. We'll have to and, surf, I guess, but um, for, and uh, yeah, when we get further further mm. north, maybe those areas pick up more northerly swell directions. Yeah. So um, we're hoping in Bayata there'll be like we're kind of I've, well, I'm always the eternal optimist, so I've got very high hopes about um, like swimming with whale sharks and surfing long boarding point breaks for like a couple of weeks, which would be great yeah. <laughs> while working with the animals there. So yeah, we definitely, if there's surf, we, we will probably stop and have a little, little surf and hopefully we'll be able to, now we've got some better camera gear than what we had when we came up the Costa Rican coast. Hopefully we can actually get some like surf footage and photos of people because we've never really been able to do that because we've never had like a zoom lens that's allowed it. So, um, oh, that's cool. Someone on board Jazzy Girl. Um, yeah, definitely. The cycling is something that, um, I was doing at Jim's parents' house as part of my initial rehab. They had a stationary bike and that was really help, helping a lot too. Um, we haven't cycled since we've been here. We actually did no. organise a bike <laughs> and then if we've been, it's been one of those um, times where you come home with like a lot of time, but because it's been so long with COVID that I've not been home to visit everybody. I've had nephews and uh, lots of new babies and, and, and just so many people to see um, and family to spend time with that, We've had less time than we thought we would, but yeah. that's how it always goes. Really that fast. way. Yes, Punta Mita Dingus, is yeah. the place. There's a tons of waste there. Yeah. So, and we, um, from what we have seen and and know, a lot of people do actually anchor their boats off of those waves when yeah. it's smaller swell, and seemingly it's not like I don't know that it's the most comfortable anchorage in the world, but seems like it's not too bad. And there are very good anchorages in that Banderas Bay 
that then you can go do day trips to the surf spots because that is one thing. The surf sail life, I think, sounds really romantic, but the reality is wherever there's surf, there's swell, and it's a really not a nice spot to have a sailboat, as we discovered in El Salvador. We couldn't even, we attempted anchoring one night in El Salvador off a surf break, and it was so rough. The wall of the bathroom got rocked so much it actually came off like it got the screws and the wall fell off and we ended up having to lift anchor at what 11 30 at night and yeah, head back because we were like this is not this is not doable it's going to fall apart on us. <laughs> yeah so um yeah so definitely we hope to surf but we do understand the surf sail life is um an easier dream than reality sometimes but yeah and definitely surfing i found to be good good for um rehab as well although you you're not maybe using your legs as much as you would think it's that kind of pressure and things has definitely helped. So, yeah. Do we have any other questions from anybody? Anything at all? Um, I'm going to double check, but we definitely, we talked about our schedules, wish lists of Starlink. Yeah, I think we've covered everything. Um, yeah. We're really excited to get back though. It's um, it feels like or it has been a long time coming to get moving again. We're, yeah. And uh, oh, what is the biggest mistake item you purchased for sailing? Hmm. I'm trying to think. That's a good question. What's the biggest mistake item you purchased for sailing? We, we acqu- Chuffed? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we acquired a wind turbine once. Oh, yes. And yes. Um, uh, we, it ended up mm-hmm. costing about $600 to get it into the country. Mm-hmm. And then once we got it to the boat, it turned out it was too big and heavy to actually be able to mm-hmm. uh, attach the chuff. Yeah, it, <laughs> we would so, have had to have a complete yeah. frame made and the cost of making the frame to support the wind turbine was more yeah. than the wind turbine. Yeah, unfortunately, it didn't work and out. I would say the, the biggest mistake item is almost more a biggest mistake of not hiring um mm. some when when we were taking like working on all the pitting and cleaning out the inside of the hole uh we did like a lot of the work ourselves mm-hmm. and i the biggest mistake in my opinion is not having hired uh some of the welding apprentices to come and help do it because once we got about 75 percent done we realized like it's just taking forever and Mm -hmm. we hired these apprentices to come and help us with it and it you know it it made all the difference in the world they're they're like Um, they're 16 to 18 year olds these guys and so they can go for eight hours cleaning aluminium grinding and stuff just no worries like they were they're tough little fellas and yeah paying mm -hmm. for help when when you need it I mm-hmm. think is is the way yeah to, that's very true go sometimes but yeah for the most part I don't think we've really made any big purchases that we kind of haven't used we've we've thought it through pretty yeah intensely for the most part there's some things we perhaps have changed like you know brand choices or something like yeah, that or, but, or the order of operations yeah like having yeah. you know some some things be ordered and then they just kind of like sat around for mm-hmm. like over a year before we were yeah. actually ready to install it or something yeah um yeah so yeah uh bob and vic have good questions bob's is how does your vet licensure go from country to country and how do we move veterinary medications through different countries so basically the way um what we do works i'm licensed to work in australia um and so i can work and be paid in australia um but in all the other countries i don't have licensing um to get licensing in most of those places is pretty um Jim's doing fantasy football and oh no he's no he's got cousins online I think what's up Mike (laughs) so sorry um yeah so we um basically the way it works is to get licensed in different countries is really difficult um in Mexico I do have to sit an examination in Spanish um and then register through their system it's there's a lot of work that would need to be done So basically the way we work around that is by working with um, local veterinarians. I essentially am working under the supervision of the local veterinarian. And so everything's done under their license. And then um, we're able to do the work essentially through them. Um, And so it's kind of the way it would work with like veterinary students when they're seeing practice, um, volunteer veterinarians when they're working in lots of different countries do this. Um, It's one of the reasons we, I mean, what, 
we obviously would do it voluntarily anyway, but I can't get paid in the countries we work in regardless. Um, and so, yeah, we essentially always work with a local veterinarian or local organisation and we're working under their licensing when we do it. Um, in terms of moving medicine, generally we try to get medication in country. And so, again, it's working through the local veterinarian is providing the script to then treat the animal we're treating. So kind of like they would for an owner of a pet where they give you the medicine and it's scripted out. Um, sorry, our neighbour's doing some um, some building. Um, in terms of moving the medicine from country to country, we will do that with some, like non-controlled medicine. So things like antibiotics, usually you can move from country to country. What I generally do is have a script from a veterinarian from the country we're going to and we're coming from to show that I guess that there is a veterinarian in the country who is aware of this medicine. Um, but in terms of the more um, restricted medications, we just don't move that through the countries. We just do it all locally. So things like anesthetics, we just have it locally with the local veterinarians and then work like that. So we try and work within all of the required legislation of different countries and it is different everywhere mexico is a little more relaxed compared to for example costa rica costa rica if you want to do campaigns it all has to be um like put through on different governmental levels whereas local veterinarians can just do local campaigns um at their clinic and they don't need to have all the registration so that's kind of um what we've been doing um joe what what's the one thing that makes your boat most comfortable for me, it's a simple, uh, another simple mm. thing, and it's having good shade. Yeah, um, so true. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, like the bimini that we have is kind of falling apart, mm -hmm. and we just have it kind of like clamped together, but it provides shade, and we bought some bigger shade tarps that we throw up and can move around and just hanging towels. Like you see some boats with these really huge sh mm. shade systems. Like, oh, man, that like would be like great. They have like rolled down fly screens. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that would be nice. Uh, and and then also another thing we have um, uh, little screens that you can put in the, mm. in the hatches and they like connect like little suction cups to keep mosquitoes out at mm -hmm. night um, because getting tons of mosquitoes in the boat yeah. is, is like the worst in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And so. Uh, yeah, like I think like fly screens, shade and decent ventilation and the little fan. Yeah. Especially where we are currently make the boat the most comfortable don't yeah, they because there's those little yeah. things like that like mm -hmm. when you can get out of the sun a little bit um and keep the mosquitoes off of you at night that makes just all the difference in the world yeah no definitely and um that actually when you were talking about wish lists that is actually the next big boat project that we can't ignore is fixing the bimini um you would have seen in any recent videos it's like literally held on with clamps at the moment yeah. and even the clamps are starting to put holes through the material because it's so thin and hopefully it's still there when we get back yeah, it could have just like blown away but we'll see and in my opinion the shade when you're on deck and underway especially like in mexico the trips are like multiple day trips to go from anchorage to anchorage so you're in the sun for days um it's you really I mean people do it without it but you really shouldn't it's the sun is so brutal um yeah yeah it's so hot so I think that's really big yeah real shade is a big thing um Australia is a dream destination for many people what does Jim think about his Oz experience uh it's been great um I like ever since I was a little kid Australia is one of the first places I ever wanted to go to um and then I ne had never been until this trip and so yeah, it's been pretty amazing. The weather's been great. The surf has been better than anticipated, uh, which, you know, everyone knows Australia has has great waves, but, you know, it even beat those expectations. And it's, yeah, it's just been a really good time meeting Shetty's family and just yeah. traveling around and the views, everything's just so much different. You know, you're just walking around, you're like, oh, that's a kangaroo in somebody's yard. Yeah, <laughs> that yeah that, that, we have cool. seen kangaroos and he saw yeah. an echidna, yeah. koala, Galahs, magpies. Yeah. He didn't believe me at first about the mag why people have to wear the um, things on their helmets to stop the magpies from swooping and pecking their eyes out. Yeah. Jim thought that was kind of a joke. And I was like, no, really, that's what people are doing. <laughs> Yet another animal that will try and kill you in yeah. Australia. <laughs> um, yeah, and I mean, I think Jim's met like, do you reckon like 60 family members and friends? It's been pretty well in because we – like um, my nephew had a birthday and we had 30 family members at that birthday that Jim met like all at once. He's, yeah, it's been fun. Yeah. 
Um, so, yeah, avoiding the sun is essential. Dave from Turkey, Mr. Rogers, thank you. We will keep up the wonderful work. Oh, uh, and, yeah, my dark circles, I've had them since I was a kid. I think it's like sinuses. I, they come and go. It's um, I had nine hours sleep the last few nights, so I can't really complain. I also don't wear any makeup, and so when I am tired, I look more tired, and when I'm not, I don't. It's, you know, just She's one been of those a things. busy and the last couple I have days, been a busy a couple, auntie a couple young kids mm -hmm. long nights early mornings yeah a lot of uh a lot of work for auntie shetty over here <laughs> um checking the foot on the fuel intake from greg yeah so our the way our fuel intake works is the a pipe goes in about that far from the bottom of the tank up and then out through kind of a little um like connection and then to the fuel line and that aluminium pipe is like welded in. So there's no way to kind of like take it off and physically check it. However, we did, we've blown through it. We've checked, you know, the, where we can feel on the end. I've also blocked it and blown through it to make sure no air bubbles come out in the fuel. So we're fairly confident that pipe is okay. It would be a real pain to have to try and get it out. I, yeah. We're hoping that doesn't, doesn't come to that. Um, the 30 foot tall tree ferns blew me away down there. Yeah. In, in Australia, there's, we, it's been kind of cool actually where my parents live has fairly different. There's a few different kind of ecosystem areas. And then we did go down South to Brisbane to see family um, and stopped at the Sunshine Coast for a couple of days on the way. So Jim's actually seen a few different regions. Like we went through the paperbark forest down South, which was really cool. It's like um, kind of a wetland with all these paperbark trees. And so he's really seen some kind of interesting parts of Australia we're hoping next time maybe to see a little more because we have stayed mostly in this region because we haven't seen any of my family for so long. Um, but it's been a really good trip. Um, yeah, overdue to, to visit family. It really had been way too long. Um, my mum was crying before I got home and has continued. <laughs> she, she'll probably start crying again soon because we're leaving soon. But she was, I mean, everyone was really excited. But um, And my little nephew, like, I was a bit worried because he's four. He turned four while we were here, and there's also a one. I have a one-year-old nephew I'd never met, and so I hadn't seen Sunny since he was one. And I was kind of worried he might feel a bit um, like shy with me because he's not like met Auntie Shetty really. And as soon as he saw me, he ran up to me and gave me a big hug and had made this little card for me saying that he loved me and misses me and stuff. And it was so cute. And so it's been, yeah, both the boys love Jim and I. We've, we've really been able to spend some really quality time with them. It's been, it's been really special. Um, yeah. Mosquito net on the, on the hoop hanging above the bed. Definitely. Our bed's kind of not set up super good to do that because it's all joined to the walls, but our little mosquito, um, those stick on suction cup mosquito ones have worked really yeah. well. Um, if you yeah. have, if you have, if anyone gets them or, mm -hmm. or has them and has trouble having them stick mm. little saliva or a little, um, Detergent little dish detergent mm. on the suction cuff part and then they they'll come off so yeah and as yeah will and ryan said they've heard mosquitoes about in texas yeah though though we got them through like it might have been just it might have been on amazon it was yeah. you can get them anywhere and it um defender. it might have been defender or west marine yeah and they're um they you can get them from different size hatches there's like a small medium and large the large is massive we made the mistake of that's one mistake yeah. we bought a really big one thinking it was bigger it was so huge we use it as shade now um but yeah those are really really handy that they made a really big difference they don't the only problem is on a really hot night because it's quite tight screen it does block a bit of the breeze but in terms of like being a bit hot versus dengue fever we kind of figured the heat's okay yeah. um oh thanks mr rogers <laughs> first patron that's cool um, yeah, we've, we've had, we're really lucky. Some of our patrons have been around for a really long time since the very early days of, of Chuffed when yeah. I was filming on an iPhone and stuck in a Golfito marina by myself trying to figure out how to get a boat moving that wasn't and, working and very thanks well. Thanks to all the patrons that mm -hmm. stuck through this yeah. year with all the setbacks, the broken ankle, the engine yeah. failure, like, mm -hmm. yeah, it wasn't really what we expected. Mm -hmm. And then even these last three months, like, people yeah. have stuck with us now. It's been really mm -hmm. important for us to be yeah. able to be here and spend some time with the family. And, mm -hmm. um, and we, we, re we really couldn't do it without yeah. everybody. So, um, yeah. 
thank you yeah definitely and we recognize a lot of people kind of came to the channel for the sailing and there's not been much sailing these last few years because between fixing the boat and then those setbacks like the broken ankle and things not quite working out with the engine and stuff means that it keeps being like oh we're going to sail and then we don't sail and we're going to sail and then we don't sail so we do understand that it's been like perhaps not as fun um, to watch the videos as it used to be when it's all islands and swimming and stuff um, that's why it's been so important to us too to continue so much of the animal work because yeah. ultimately that is our main purpose and what we're really passionate about is being able to help the animals and so without the patrons we really yeah and as Tim said we we really would never be out be able to do it all without you guys um it's really amazing the changes we've been able to make in in organizations that then mean um you know by changing and helping an organization potentially that means that like that legacy lasts forever um but also the individual animals like Glenkido and kiwi would have definitely died without our intervention there's a lot of dogs that the little parvo puppy you know there's a lot of doggies that would have died had we not been there to help them and although it's only, you know, it might not seem like a lot, it's only one dog, you know, it's one of those things that one dog at a time. And although it might not make a big difference on the scale of the world, you know, to the little girl who owns that puppy or um, to the people who adopted Blanquito, you know, it, it makes a really big difference to them and obviously to the animals' lives. And then obviously being able to do vaccination and um, spay and neuter campaigns we really hope that we're helping to make a whole community healthier where there's less stray dogs and cats. The dogs that are there are vaccinated, so they're not spreading rabies, they're not spreading distemper and parvovirus. Um, and some of those diseases can be caught by wild animals as well. And so we're really kind of hoping that it's one of those things that the ripple on effects of what we do can make a really big change. Um, and then obviously by having all of you guys, we also hopefully are helping other people to um, make changes as well that can help have that ripple effect so yeah it's it's we really couldn't do without our patrons and donators it's pretty amazing yeah. some of the some of the animals we've helped and some of the special things we've been able to do it's it's really cool um yeah exactly as as tr bowl and no need to apologize life is life we, you roll with the punches and yeah we definitely have gotten pretty good at um going with the flow and accepting like flexibility is pretty key yeah yeah like with the ankle, the first week after I broke the ankle, we were both pretty devastated because we really, we were really ready to go sailing. Like, you know, it was like, we're going home for like a one week holiday and then we're back and we're doing it. Like we had, we even had turned down, like going and visiting Jim's brother in Canada, as well as the trip we'd done. We were like, we don't have time. We have to get sailing, you know? And then um, when I broke my ankle, it was, it was a really tough week. But after a week, we kind of did just say, yeah, as you said, like you, we can't go back in time. There's nothing we can do. All we can do is like, for me, you know, I rested and I ate a lot of good food and put on a bit of weight. And like, you know, there, there was good things that happened too. And Jim got to watch the greatest game of football ever played um, with his dad in person. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, but, you know, you like you said, you got to roll the punches and, and accept things as they are and know that, you know, we are going to be sailing soon and it's, you know, just the way it is. Yeah. Um, love your veterinary and the amount of animals that you help. Thanks, Brendan and Robert. I love the work we do. Yeah, and that's that's true. There are worse ways and worse places to break an ankle. That same week that I broke my ankle, another friend on a sailboat broke hers. She was texting and slipped on ice and broke her ankle. And then two weeks later, a friend of mine who's a vet fell down her stairs and broke her ankle. And it did make me kind of think, well, yeah, as far as breaking your ankle goes, at least I was in a beautiful location overlooking uh, Targi and, um, you know, I'd not really skied before and I got to go on the toboggan. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> um, hello from Oregon. Um, looking forward to meeting us someday. I oh, separated a shoulder there in 2002. Hi from Ireland always comes in threes. Well, I think we've had more than three now, hopefully. Yeah. So we should be good um, between the ankle, the engine, and the maybe the fuel. That could be the third. Um, yeah, we're, like I said, hopefully one day we can meet people in person again, um, head somewhere, maybe yeah. visiting in America again or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, yeah. yeah, I guess – before if anyone has any other questions mm -hmm. come in but before we go i was just going to say like 
as far as like our video schedule, mm. um, just so people kind of have an idea. The uh, next maybe two, possibly three videos uh, will be from the van trip. Um, and then we'll probably have another video of getting back, leaving Mexico, going to Australia, maybe some type of Australian video. And then a like a, a season a season recap. Um, so maybe like five five to six videos before we mm -hmm. start um, of, of the events of like the next couple of weeks that are coming, getting back to Chuff, getting mm -hmm. it ready and sailing. Um, that way we have enough time to, as my brother says, stack some footy uh, <laughs> yeah. of the work and moving the boat. Mm -hmm. And then um, hopefully we'll be somewhere like in Paltuco. And then by then we, we start releasing the videos uh, from the current sailing. So yeah, about maybe around five more videos of yeah, van trip, a little bit of Australia, that kind of thing. And yeah. then we'll start a, a new season. Mm -hmm. um, a sailing season. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <it laughs> don't want to jinx it's, it yet, but yeah, videos are roughly depending on the. It kind of changes, but it's between kind of one month and probably like, do you reckon about ten weeks behind real time? Um, so right now they're a little more than that because they're, we're editing videos from Mexico. Um, but they'll because we've been in Australia and not filming so much, they're going to catch right up again, and then it won't be too far behind. So yeah. it kind of changes just depending on how much we've been filming and where we've been. Um, but they, they're always a little bit of a lag. Um, and if you do ever want to know what's happening in real time, we do update social media with like pictures that are a bit more real time. And then obviously two patrons get the live updates. Um, and our patron is monthly. So, um, you can give, um, $1 a month. So it's not, um, we try to make it so that it's really affordable for people if they'd like to become a patron to get those live updates and things It's we understand that right now it's, the economy is not doing super good and things and it's hard for people. So that's kind of what we're doing. Um, yeah. So it's kind of like, a, I think the setting is the $5 a month, but you can even give less if, if you need to. So um, Robert said, your channel is very uplifting. That's significant in today's world. Thank you for that. Yeah. We really appreciate that. Uh, good to see you too, Carl. And Paul from SV Herba Buena from El Salvador. Um, he's a friend of Nick, as you guys may have seen on her channel or her social media. But yeah, hello. Good to see you here as well. Um, I'm glad you've got good internet in El Salvador. That's not always a given. So <laughs> yeah. Does anybody else have any questions for us before we head off? I think um, we've covered most things that uh, we're planning on doing. And yeah, and people doing. do have questions in the future. Yeah. Send an email. Yes, um, that's the best way to yes. ask questions. Or if you mm -hmm. have your Patreon, you can throw it Message. in the Patreon page as well. Yeah. But uh, otherwise, yeah. yeah, send an email. And I'm from Panama. Oh, we've got people from all over, which is pretty cool. Hmm. Oh, thanks, Robert. Appreciate that. Yeah, and as Tim said, um, while watching the vids, he posted in Patreon to look into different things with the fuel, and that that is like like I said, a really good thing without yeah. having our patrons getting the live updates. Thank you, Robert. Yeah, thanks, Robert. We appreciate that a lot. Um, yeah, having the patrons there really does help um, get things, you know, get things in real time when we need answers as well, which is really good. And we do use our patrons a lot with different, you know, when we have questions or ideas we need to bounce around and stuff. So we really appreciate them, not just for um, the fact that they donate and help our work, but also just having that support network and community that we can talk to when we need you know need to it's really great and because they come from so many different walks of life we you know we've got a lot of mechanics on there and things so it's it's yeah really really good um, uh, we're heading back to mexico mm. uh the end of this week and so then that'll take us a few days and so we should be back at shaft um i think by the like the 30th is it september 1st of october yeah, the, yeah. around the first of october yeah. we should be we should be back mm -hmm. at, at the boat yeah um, and then, yeah, as Jim said, we plan on just getting the fuel system together as quickly as we can. Yeah. Hopefully it doesn't take long, but as we said, some things take longer than you expect. Um, and then we can start test testing motor again in the water. So we do plan on doing one big test motor again, like we did where we take it out and just kind of go up and down the coast for eight hours before we head off just to yeah. like make sure everything's running as it should. Um, setting up the thing. Got to go love the channel. Keep up the good work. Thank Thanks, you, Mel. Mel. 
Um, Carl asked, yeah, you missed a bit of the chat where we're headed this winter. Um, we're basically heading north into the Sea of Cortez. So stopping at Lapulco, Vallarta definitively, maybe some other stops between that and then heading up into the Sea of Cortez. We don't have a like really set time frame, but we want to spend a little bit of time stopping because we want to be able to do animal work. We've already organised some with some rescue groups, um, but we do hope to kind of be moving a bit this time because we do want to get into the Sea of Cortez. Um, uh, expect a return date, setting up the cam from Tim, Skunk Works. Wow, thank you. Have you ever met Captain Rick Moore from SSL? I don't think so. Not that, I don't yeah, think so. Sure. Um, and Steve, we met in Chappas. Glad you made it to Panama. That's awesome. Um, how is the engine now? Just replaced mine with a brand new beta. It's been faultless from the get go. Give me the confidence, girl. Solo. That's from Vince. Yeah, we did look at the beta engines, and um, the main thing was we knew the yam might fit and worked in our system, and so that's why we stuck with it. Um, the engine itself has been faultless. It's just been that fuel supply. So um, we're confident now that the engine is good. And that's one of the reasons we're feeling confident about setting off again, because we know worst case, if we don't get the fuel system 100%, we can just bypass it and we'll be fine. Um, so, yeah, it, the confidence from having a new engine really is, like, pretty awesome. Yeah, the engine that was, starting when you turn mm -hmm. it on is it's a great feeling. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and as, yeah, as Robert Scranton said, the fuel issues are puzzling indeed. And, yeah, they are. Like, even the mechanics we've talked to have really kind of been, like, it's weird that it takes so long to happen, you know, like, it's not as cut and dry, but when we looked up uh, diagnosing fuel fuel issues, there's a really interesting article on my, what's the, it's one of the boating, it's one of the sailing magazines, it, the boat, it's not the boat galley. Um, anyway, it, one of them, they always have a section that's kind of like about um, like real life sailors trying to solve a problem. And it was about the chasing a fuel problem. And, God, they had trouble. It took them two years to eventually find it, and it was this little crack in a hose that they only found where they literally, like, went over every hose trying to find it. And they had fixed the problem five different times before that where they had found a fault and fixed it, but it turned out it wasn't the actual fault. So, you know, we've come to a level of acceptance about the fuel where we're just kind of replacing everything that could be a problem since we don't have a very complicated fuel system. And then we put our fingers crossed. <laughs> Stop at Wiltulco and Barra de Navidad. Yeah, um, Stephen said that. We do want to stop at Wiltulco and actually Barra de Navidad is on our list, hopefully stop at because there is some rescue organisations there as well. A few local, um, one of the ladies who's at the marina a lot apparently or maybe lives there, um, does work with local animals, so definitely. Um, skunk Works, everyone hit the like button to help boost the video in the YouTube algorithm. Yes, that's always appreciated. And definitely sharing our videos, liking them, that all really does help help yeah. it pop up more. Um, especially recently doing more animal work. We don't get quite as many of just the kind of random views that we would get sailing. And so the videos are a bit lower down on, this, on the algorithm. So giving them a boost really helps. Um, Stephen, how's the wiring? Our wiring, um, I think it's fine. The back, It's a floating system. So nothing's ground onto the hull. It's all floating. Um, it has got, um, yeah. Oh, Steve, <laughs> Okay. I know which Steve you are now, electrical engineer, I believe, Steve. <laughs> yeah, um, so, yes, um, I believe the wiring is now all fine. Nothing's ground. It's all floating. The mechanic who installed the engine with us was a bit like, why do you have so many on and off switches? Because we have, like, a negative switch and a positive switch, and but it all works. Um, so I think, I think we are all good now. We're not getting any current leaks except from the antenna, which we know about. We have have to go up and um, isolate the antenna a bit better. It's just been kind of on the to-do list for a while and with everything else that's happening, it's been put off a little bit, but we will do that. Um, and Tim, that's why I'm saying it might not be fuel, it could be electrical. Yeah, we, talking to the mechanics, they seem fairly confident it's fuel related when they saw the videos, but um, yeah, I guess if it's still happening, that's something we'll have to look into. Um, the engine itself, when we bypassed our fuel system and went straight from the jerry can to the engine, it did run fine for 10 hours, no problem. So we're fairly confident the problem is coming from somewhere behind um, that initial, you know, the line that goes straight to the engine. Captain G, can't keep up with your clips, but keep them coming. I'll catch up one day. Yeah, thank you. And we'll give the animals a hug from you. 
Can't be electrical on a diesel, 100% mechanical. I oh, think Steve. Um, Delicacy sky is around route to see potential. <laughs> Okay, so Christopher asked, do you think replacing the whole fuel line is necessary? I'm having the same problem. It potentially isn't necessary, but the fuel line is not, we really just have like fuel line to a filter and then fuel line to the engine. So to replace that is actually just not very expensive. And so on the off chance that one of our fuel lines does have a tiny pinhole or a crack and we can't find it when we're, you know, um, without like, more advanced diagnostic tools we're not finding it it kind of makes sense to us to i guess the time wasted trying to find that pinprick and replace only one lot of fuel line versus spending the extra 30 dollars and just replacing the whole lot i think is just worth doing um so that's what we're doing just based on the research we've done and the probability of what could be happening um i think everyone goes about their diagnostics in a different way but i think we've just been delayed for so long that we kind of don't want to take the risk of not just spending a little more now and kind of hopefully getting it all sorted um, rather than doing it piecemeal and then never knowing what it might have been um, so the idea is if we replace all the fuel lines and if the problem's still happening at least we can just completely rule that out um, Dallas and Calico Skies are en route to the Sea of Cortez. Yeah, I believe they're already up there. Um, they left Charpus around the same time we came back to Australia. Um, they have been through a lot of hurricanes. That was one of the reasons it took them a while to leave Charpus. Um, I'll admit, I mean, those guys have a lot of sailing experience and are fine, but um, I'll admit I don't really envy them having to go up the coast when they did because from what we've heard, it was really rough. Um, we've had friends that did the same kind of thing and it, it was rough. They were constantly skirting squalls and storms and then having to hide from hurricanes as they came up the coast. So, um, yeah, we might run into them up there. Um, Robert blames our fuel issues on gremlins. Yeah, it does feel like that. I don't know if you guys have seen that. Remember that weird movie? Yeah. There's like a weird like kind of like World War one, two, two, World War II, World like War II gremlin. Movie. Yeah, gremlins on the plane movie. And we were like, hmm, that's basically <laughs> us. Uh, and it has a woman woman protagonist that saves the day. And so <laughs> um, Tim runs off the solenoid. Did we check the vent on the fuel tank? We did. Um, we are replacing that hose, though. So the vent's definitely patent and open. However, there's a small chance the hose could be collapsing because it is an old hose. And so we are going to replace it just in case because that hose is pretty cheap. The um, it, We're going to put a wire wired hose on so it definitely can't collapse because right now it's got a plastic one so possibly that's collapsing but the vent itself is definitely patent and we can blow in and out of it not underway but there's that small chance it might be periodically collapsing so that's the plan um the extra layer carl said about the backup fuel tanks um yeah and robert said about those little um the micro the um like bacteria and, and fungal that stuff that can grow in the fuel we do use a like biocide in our fuel and it all, is all new fuel in a clean tank so that's fairly unlikely um yeah steve said the dirty fuel it's a real problem in these parts for sure um we don't think that's happening because of how the filters are going the filters have been nice and clean and things but definitely um if we're able to get the fuel polished, we're going to do that, but it is nice and clean and bacteria sided. So um, as Skunkwork says, it's cumulative on the move. Something small replacing fuel line is cheaper to start with. Yeah, that's kind of what we figured. It's we're kind of just replacing the things that are cheap to do and then being able to rule them out, I think is a good starting point. And like I said, we now have a, we got a little T piece that goes in the filter that is a vacuum gauge. And so at the very least, we will be able to know if it is a, if the vacuum gauge, uh, when the engine has uh, shut, if it does shut down again, hopefully that doesn't even happen. But if it does ever shut down and the vacuum gauge is really high, we at least know there's like a, um, you know, a suction problem where the suction isn't coming through and the vacuum is increasing. Whereas if that is fine, it's more likely to be like an air leak kind of problem. So that will definitely help with our diagnostics, which is cool. Um, Robert, yeah, I did hear, I don't know if you saw me earlier showing them off to you. Um, yeah, these are actually my mum's earrings that I've stolen while I'm home, <laughs> which is, which has been fun. Um, 
And Carl, we do have a new Yanmar, so um, it is an it is a new one. So the engine itself seemingly has been running running well. Um, David, do more. Yeah, hopefully we can do live chats more frequently. Yeah. It is sometimes hard in Mexico because we don't always know exactly how our internet connection is going to be. Um, but hopefully we can schedule one for like when we're places like Puerto Vallarta where we know we can hopefully go somewhere and get a good internet connection because um, it's been fun to chat with you guys. And I think it's a good way to get – because sometimes you guys ask us questions that we wouldn't necessarily think of telling you because it's things that, you know, we're just doing already. Um, and, yeah, as Steve said, polishing the fuel and changing the primary filters, are, yeah, definitely a good idea. Um, Todd's asked about monitoring engine room temperature. We have not. We have I, thrown a thermometer in there. Yes. I yeah. threw the um, oven thermometer and, and, like, clipped it up right next to the engine, and that's not getting too hot, but we have been looking at trying to get an infrared gun to be able to point at the engine to see the temperature of the engine, but we haven't been able to find an affordable one that looks like it's good quality. We've seen some that are like cheaper, but don't measure the temperatures we need or don't look like they're going to work very good or they're like quite expensive. And we're not sure that we can justify spending that amount for just that one diagnostic at this point. Um, but definitely, I guess if the problem keeps occurring, it's something we can look into a bit more. Um, yeah. I, I think if, if all goes well, I think we will hopefully be leaving Puerto Madero mm -hmm. the beginning of November. Yeah. So we kind of give our, we kind of have like a month mm -hmm. to get the fuel system set up, go on some test runs, get the boat situated. We'll almost for sure end up working with some of the animals there kind of whenever we get back. It's the word yeah. spreads quickly around town. Everybody mm -hmm. there knows us. And so we'll, probably do some work with the animals there and then hopefully by the end of October we're moving yeah that's kind of kind of that time Hur we basically tried to time it for hurricane season because yeah. in theory hurricane season should be wrapping up by the end of October and so we kind of tried to give ourselves a month with the hope that it doesn't take a month to get ready but at least we have that extra time if we need it so that we can get going as soon as the season kind of is good to be moving again um an air leak will give you diesel drop back, yeah. Um, and that's, yeah, that's exactly what, um, as Vin said, that's pretty much what our mechanic thinks is happening because we do have a pipe that lifts it out. So, um, yeah, we're hoping that with all these changes we can get it um, under control. Um, and, yeah, that, that's exactly, as we said, we're just kind of doing the inexpensive things that we can change and then going from there. All right. Well, we have... Um, some Spanish lessons and I have fun dentist and doctor things to do today. We're wrapping everything up before we head back um, to the boat land. Um, so we might head off soon. We really appreciate. Oh, thank you, Robert. Yeah, it's. Yeah, thank you, guys. We really appreciate you all coming to the chat and we really appreciate um, everyone who donates and who supports our videos by watching them and giving them likes and things like that. It all really does help. And we really couldn't do it without you all um yeah else, yeah and if uh people missed the beginning of the chat or know mm. other people that might want to see it yeah i think you can just go on youtube and it'll be there yes so yeah it should be able to be watched and um, you should be able to share it um yeah yeah yep yeah. yeah. yeah, exactly so you can go back to the beginning and watch it all and see the chats as they come up i think is how yeah. it all works so yeah. yeah thanks everybody for coming thanks everybody that donates and watches the videos and yeah soon soon yeah chuck will be moving and we're really excited to start sharing those videos with you guys and getting yeah. moving again. It's going to be really, really cool. It's yeah, exciting stuff. So well, everybody enjoy mm -hmm. the rest of their Sunday or Monday. If you are in Australia. Yes. Yeah. Go Eagles. <laughs> yes. Go Eagles. <laughs> all right. We'll see you all again soon. Have a great day. Thank you all for coming again. Bye. Bye everybody.